All right, ladies and gents, man, am I excited for this one. So we just covered the first two games uh, between two 1300s here and the Hidden Community Tournament. We've got like close to 200 people, a lot of different skill levels playing, uh, and they're playing on Hidden Cup settings, Hidden Cup maps. And uh, this is a best of three uh, between the two 1300 little players. And we've got pretty much my first cast of evacuation um, outside of pro games. So Dravidians now for uh, Jualapin Chris, which is his name, uh, which I imagine might be for more of the water approach here. And then we have Cryptics, who's gone for the Cumans, which makes me think that Cryptics wants to TC out here. So uh, Cumans have the potential to build the second TC on evacuation. There's a lot of resources out here. Normally, these resources become very important long term. And then uh, Dravidians, maybe more of the standard approach where you take water control and land control in Feudal Age. Because the majority of games in Hidden Cup, we had just that. We had a dock. We had fishing ships. We had... Wait, 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 wait. No, it's not it. I He's not going to do that. I'm going to tell you what Blue's going to do because we just saw the previous game. Blue is going to... You putting again. Blue is going to go fast castle... And go for a bunch of Dravidian Siege, isn't he? I, I'm seeing two villagers on straggler trees again. It's another sieve that is cheap Siege. And another sieve that can go fast castle. And blue has not shown to be a very standard player for me. Wow. This game could be insane then. Right? It, it could be unbelievable if we have two TCs and the other guy goes to eat TC. Huh. Well, we'll see. Um... That's just my prediction. I, of course, don't know what happened in these games, but I heard the series was amazing. And so I'm here for it. So far, I am really excited to see some of the, like, special Hidden Cup maps in a, in a tournament like this. Because, like, pros will take a map like this and very frequently turn it into a similar type of game. And, you know, obviously it can be really good games. But it could be, like, similar openings. Who plays it better? Whereas here, we're already seeing like completely different thought processes and approaches, at least before we see things pan out. So that's how I'm feeling. So, but yeah, apparently Blue did have a shoulder surgery a couple of weeks before this. So <laughs> maybe that that influenced his selection of strategy. Um, I I wouldn't be surprised though if this player always plays Yolo strategies. There's a lot of people between like a thousand and fifteen hundred elo. Well, I mean, geez, all the way up to like twenty one or twenty two hundred elo that are playing YOLO strategies, and that's kind of their thing. So we'll see. Uh Zujo says, I'm planning on playing ranked the first time later. Wish me luck. All right, good luck, dude. Best of luck to you. Remember, the first like five to ten ish ranked games is really where it gets tricky to to know where you're at, right? You expect to lose some games. It, those are your placement games. Like, even myself, at 2300 ELO, I only win half of my games. So, at best, that's kind of where you'll eventually end up. So, I think a lot of people go into it. No one likes to lose, so I think a lot of people easily get discouraged when they lose some games, but that's just how it goes. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, I think Cryptics wants to go fast feudal into a TC, but has forgotten the second Dark Age building? Let's see. Wants to drop off the food, we'll get to 500 food, and then we'll try and click feudal, and the game will say, no, you are missing a building, because normally you have a mill. We are about to see the biggest panic mill of all time. You ready? <laughs> Here we go. Drops off the food. Drops off the food. Cryptics. Drops off the food. Goes to click Feudal Age. And is like, oh no! <laughs> okay, well, Mill, Barracks, whatever. Barracks is more expensive, but he, <laughs> he has the wood. And now he's like, oh crap! There we go. And now clicks up to Feudal Age. All right, so that was obviously not part of the plan. That was a big screw up. Elsewhere, we have a mill out here from Blue. He's dropping off the food now. 
And didn't quite have enough. Is going to have the food here. Yeah, like... And now we have villagers forward? What the... What is happening? Okay. Well, Blue will know, as everyone should when they play Evacuation, that this area is there for both. And when you're up against the Cumans, you might think that they're going to be out here. No way, dude. Wow. Okay, so he's going to build a barracks there. Cryptix is making a mill. I think Cryptix actually wants to TC this area, which is what makes us so crazy. And Blue's licking his chops like, oh, I know you're out here, pal. I think this might be men at arms. Villagers head to gold. Yep, men at arms. Oh, man. Where do you build the TC when this pressure comes in? Um, you could you could maybe just build it like over here or something. Oh man. Oh geez, this is rough. Some of these vills are weak too. Okay, Cryptix hits Fuel. So this is when the TC wants to be placed. The scout is here. The scout could help. Okay, this is not a TC you build. This is not your dream TC. This is not the white picket fence. This is not the, you know, two boys and a girl and, and the two doggos, right? This isn't the life plan, whatever your life plan is, Cryptix. This is, this is, uh, you know, this is what we have to do for now. And then hopefully we can have the white picket fence later on. This is rough. This is painful. And the TC does not build very quickly either. Because the second TC with humans is, for balance reasons, a lot slower. I, I don't think this goes up. I think this TC gets denied. I think this is over. Blue knew that the, the opponent would evacuate. And it's just massacring these villagers now. And that TC absolutely will not go up. Men at arms are here. And what a strategy here from Blue. Understanding the map. Understanding what the Cumans means. And Cryptix has no food. No food income whatsoever because these villagers were supposed to collect food. Quick wall! Quick wall for the people! Quick wall! Okay. Um... And, you know, maybe another quick wall attempt, but this should be game over. TC gets deleted. That villager will go down as well. Quick wall! Quick wall! Quick! Okay. Um, and we got an archery range now from blue to continue to pile on the pressure. So, <laughs> interesting. Cryptics bought food to make vills because there's no food income. And is going to now... Run over here to build the TC. The ideal TC spot was obviously going to be on the food. If Blue notices this and denies it again, it ends the game. Now, how is Blue's economy? Well, you've got one farm, but you still have the hunt. You still have the berries. That is so good. And Blue's probably feeling like, what else can I do right now? I have done... You know, I've denied the TC. I've done a lot. And now sees these houses. And there's always going to be something beyond those houses. And, hmm. Okay. Now we've got the TC going up. Now, this TC should complete. The archers don't have fletching. There's only going to be two of them. There might be a villager that goes down. But the real thing you need right now if you're cryptics is you need farms. You need food income. Because you... The goal of the second TC is to make villagers. You cannot do that without food. Almost feels like we're going to see a tower here behind the wood line or something. More villagers evacuating here for blue. Blue's played very strong. This is this is more standard than I was expecting based on how blue played before. Oh, yo, Cryptix with the cows! Cryptix wants the food! Shipping home the cows. Next day delivery. That's actually really important. That food is, is so needed. If there was ever a sieve to come back with, after losing that many vills, it might be the humans because of the second TC. Don't tell me those cows are actually going to get home. Blue doesn't see them. Who knows if Cryptic, Cryptics might have said, might have told them to come home a long time ago. Yeah, cows are going to make it to the TC. Here we have two farms. Nothing crazy, but still something. Cryptix continues to fight. 
Something that Blue has done such a good job with is focusing on this area. But oh god, the boar! He's getting the boar! <laughs> Get it! Nice. Um, but but also I think that something that Blue is forgetting about is now that your opponent has this TC here, like you can go in here and wreak so much havoc. Now, ultimately, I think the plan should be from here is if you make it to Castle Age faster, just Siege push this TC down. Um, you know, having played this map, it's very easy to forget what I've said. But again, if they're protected here, they're unlikely going to be protected here as well. Right? Now, neither player's really fished here. Um... I doubt we'll see that play any role at this stage. The two villagers built the tower and just walked away from it. And Blue's going to click up to Castle. 37 eco against 29. Like, I just worry about Red's castle time here. By the way, buildings that are on cracked terrain, which is the entirety of this island, take like 50% more damage? Or I actually, can someone remind me the percentage? Is it 25% more? It's a lot. I think it's 50. It feels crazy. It take more damage. So if you had a siege push from the middle, it would melt this TC so much faster than if you were to have a siege push from here. Yeah, this is huge. Archers on farms. Villagers cannot collect resources from a farm if a farm is being attacked. This is really smart. Really annoying to face up against, but it's exactly what you've got to do here if you're blue. It always favors the aggressor. And eco looks pretty good. Farming eco's there. Food eco's still here. Blue gets more wood for making it to the next stage as well. So blue who went Roman Scorpion. Went Saracen forward. YOLO fast castle. Game one. Game two. Went crazy Scorpion U pudding rush. Now this game went man at arms and archers. Is gonna try and finish the game with a siege push here. And I just I just don't see how Cryptics can keep this TC up. I mean Cryptics is on the way to the next stage. I'll tell you what you do if you're Cryptics. You ready? You foresee that this is gonna be bad, because everything in life is telling you this is gonna be bad. And you YOLO a castle here, right? So if you're gonna lose this, good. Go ahead, lose it, and you drop a castle in the front of your opponent's base. It almost seems like he's thinking about that. It also could be that he's going for for the stone for towers or for a castle here. Hmm. T90, it's only 20% bonus damage received for crack terrain. Really? Okay, well. Like I said, it's just a noticeable amount. You do have to be a little careful. Okay, so Cryptics can't isn't really producing bills for the time being. Um, has crossbows around the stone, so can't even fully take the stone. Cryptics, please. Please build a castle at Blue's base. Please. <laughs> These villas are probably going to die. I mean, you need to get... You need to pre-make a siege workshop here to make your own siege defensively. That has to be your goal. Delete the farm. Somehow fit a siege workshop here. Do not try and make a castle underneath the siege, my friend. Come on. Don't don't try it. Ay ay ay. Okay. Um Saving for the castle. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. This is really bad. Still doesn't have enough stone for a castle. No! Life is unfair! Life is unfair. Doesn't have enough wood to repair the TC either, by the way. Okay. Uh, you also need to be able to hop into the TC to drop off the stone. Still eight stone away. Oh, come on. Come on. There. Come on. Drop it off. Drop it off. Drop it off. Drop it off. Drop it off and run. Drop it off. Ah! Run! No! 649! No! 650! Run, 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 run! Okay, get out of here. It's gonna be bad. And you take that castle and you drop it right in your opponent's face, mister. 
This is horrible, but you need to make sure your opponent's life is horrible too. All right? Ah! <laughs> he's, well, he's worried he's going to lose his main base with a defensive castle. So again, the feeling is logical to build a defensive one. Uh, such a good job here from Blue, and now Blue at this point thinks, let's expand a little bit, drop a second TC. Just in case. Yo! Wait, we've got Lancers! I mean, you can lance your opponent's economy and then build a defensive castle. I'm okay with that. This castle needs to go up fast. Hmm. I mean, blue doesn't really strike me as a player who focuses on their economy much. Oh, God. Why did why did we wait so much time? Cryptics, why did we wait so much time for this? Blue is getting lanced. Villagers are going down. Siege is advancing forward. Castle's going to go up. Lancers killed four villagers there and could obviously find more kills as well. We need to be very careful with this. Like, this this push still kills red. This castle does not protect much. It protects part of the gold, but, I mean, units can still stand over here. So it's easy for us to say, but you could actually avoid this castle. Well, I think from Blue's perspective, you see the castle and you see the darkness and you think, I can't do anything. The castle's too strong. Is this winnable, guys? For red? Is Cryptic can Cryptics actually win this? Okay, villager goes down there. This is unprotected. These villagers now have to evacuate because the TC never went up here. He went for the expansion. I think this is actually very winnable. Red could kill so many vills. Red's TC is protected. Blue's army feels useless to him right now because he doesn't know where to go. He's got three mangonels and a cow there. That's not going to win in the game. The blue's going to bring those crossbows army, that crossbow army home to defend. And wow. Interesting. Well, that's the thing about the sea lobe. These guys are good players, of course. But like, this is a messy map where a lot of crazy thickness can happen. And this is kind of what's awesome about evacuation. Uh, when, it, when a more average player is playing it. Life is pretty simple for Cryptics. He just focuses on his eco here. Micro step lancers. Blue's got eco here. Eco here. Sending vills all the way across. Like, his TCs could not be further apart. He's got siege that he kind of wants to push with, but really can't. And it's just awkward. Especially with how fast the lancers are as well. Azure says no elo upgrades. Uh, you meant to say no eco upgrades, I'm sure. That's true. But also no elo upgrades for both of them. I'm pretty sure what that that's what that means when neither player has any eco upgrades. Lancers will struggle against the pikes. Lancers could kill siege though. You don't really want to be going lancers against pikes long term. Oh, big moment. Big moment. Big moment. Big moment. He's looking for the siege. I think blue realizes the lancers are around. More Lancers going to be running in this way. Cryptics trying to micro. Good micro. Still doesn't know the siege is there. Can Cryptics ever get back to this area? Can Cryptics ever take eco, like take resources out in the mainland again? Because Cryptics is soon going to be out of gold here, guys. And I eventually would. Did find that villager though. Okay, great job using the mobility. Blue didn't notice! Blue is so focused on that. Blue does not notice that the Lancers are there. Finally does. And Cryptics. Now he loses his Lancers here because he's looking at this. Cryptics has the villager lead. It will be three TCs for Blue. Really spreading out with these TCs. I'm not sure if that helps or hurts. I feel like it simplifies the game if your eco's all together out here. This would be an epic victory. If Cryptics can somehow win this, it would be insane. Should be so dead. Oh, I actually find some gold here. Nice. Oh, and I guess you could actually take all this gold too because blue isn't here at all. I wonder if there's a chance that blue deletes this TC and just says forget about it. I'm not sure new Vills are doing too much there. Yep, here come Vills. 
<laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> this is hilarious, man. Where are these bills going? What's the plan? Are you going to take the stone, maybe? <laughs> I want him to build a TC. <laughs> I want him to TC drop. <laughs> it feels like he could. It feels like he's waiting for it. <laughs> the Lancers are taking out the TC. I mean, it'd really be sending a message. It says there's one villager on stone somewhere. This guy needs to drop off the stone. And then the wood needs to come in. Okay, Siege Workshop. I mean, that's fine. That makes a lot more sense. Oh, yeah, this TC is going to go down. So, Cryptix is going to have the cracked terrain. He's going to have the starting island. Uh, yellow... Uh, Chris is going to have... And sorry for the confusion. I know his name isn't Chris in-game. But Chris is going to have the, the, like, new land, which I think gives him the big edge. But... Pretty crazy stuff here. Imagine starting to lose all your houses because these Lancers are out. But I think in some ways, this should tell Blue exactly what he needs to do. You, you keep an eye on this, and then, you know, maybe you head back over here. It feels like a weird spot to attack because you're just defending land you're losing, but... This farming eco is amazing. This farming eco is amazing. Um... Wouldn't mind even a third and a fourth town center. It's just, it's really just adding eco at this stage. The Lancers are actually taking out enough houses where this could be a problem for Blue. And Blue just bought enough for a castle, and Blue's going to drop the castle there. So, yeah. Blue's just thinking, protect this choke, and we win the game. But it's simultaneously getting a bit housed because of the step Lancers that are out. Hmm. Now, guys, we intentionally put three relics along the middle here. It should be three. Um, because I felt like the player who takes mainland control should have some benefit. So it's, like, super easy to just build a monastery here and get all three relics. So in some situations where we'd see the player, like, in blue's position expand to the outside, and the other player would push the starting island, this player would have relics, which really helped their eco. Um... Food is a bit of an issue for both right now, I'm noticing. Eco upgrades are still a big problem for both of them, but this game, sometimes when games just kind of like fall apart on you, it's easy to get out of a rhythm. God, blue is super house still. Castle's gonna go up. You could tell blue's like, do I really want to even worry about this with my army? I feel like such a weird spot to prioritize at this stage. These guys probably n never really played this map much. It's hard to get a gauge. Hard to have a sense on how things are going to go here. Oh, Woody Co is painful. And Step Lancer... Oh, sorry. Kipchak's come out this way. Run directly in towards a castle. Now Cryptics will realize he's going to have some problems. Hmm. Okay. A Manganel will be added to maybe fight this area. Step Lancers are this way. Kipcheks are this way. If Cryptix can go Imp, Cryptix can treb this down. Someone says, what is Blue doing? Blue just boom. B Blue is booming. He is booming, but he lost the starting TC and he lost a lot of villagers and he doesn't have mobility and his eco is all spread out. So it's really tricky to keep track of this. He's like, I need to, I need to attack here. And then he's like, okay, now I need to attack here. And then he needs to castle here. There's just so many different areas to prioritize. And certain aspects have just kind of fallen apart on him because of that. Nice reaction there. That's a lot of Lancers, though. We'll have to be careful. Lots of idle time from Blue because of how crazy this game has become. And I think if Cryptics can click Imp... I think blue would panic the second this castle starts to get trebbed down. That could be a big problem. Oh, God. The siege! <laughs> you remember where these things started? <laughs> they have been rolling around. They have seen more of the world than any other siege weapon in history. Idols inside this TC. Idols inside this TC. Soon about to be idols inside this TC because the Lancers are here. 
as a random villager from red, maybe trying to sneak up his own TC there. So he can have some piece of the pie. Oh, man. This is so stressful. Look at the idols. Oh! Cryptic's really good micro. Cryptic's on the way to imp. And the player who lost their second TC, who lost all of those villagers, but continued to fight, I, I think actually has the lead. Now, it's not like a considerable lead. If this army goes down, I think my opinions would change. But like, I'm thinking Treb's here. Enough Kip checks in the mix with the Lancers to deal with any pikes. You can expand your eco again in this area. Remember, in all the other games for blue was like early attack works or it doesn't. That's kind of how the, the games played out. They did not go long. So I think maybe we're seeing part of that as well with their styles. Not seeing any efficient lumber camps here for, for Cryptics, but he's coming here now to chop those trees. And Cryptics has to be careful. He doesn't have any upgrades on the Kip checks. They're not going to do too much. That's a really nice unit grouping here from Blue. And Blue stabilized a bit more. Some of this eco has gone back to work. All these TCs are still producing villagers. That imp from Red will give Treb. It will give him access to Trebs, but Red has just been one TC this whole time. Never added the second. Well, after losing the second, but yeah. Lancers and Kipchaks are still using that mobility. Must be such a pain for Blue to have to chase this down all the time. It's like the second he gets to one position, Cryptics is in another spot. And very first thing Cryptics does is Cryptics skews up the Trebs. Sitting here waiting for a reaction from the opponent. Opponent is here, and now Cryptics runs away again. Cryptics, 16 on food. No horse collar. is really painful when wood such an issue. And now Blue panics. And I'm beginning to panic as people ask me what ELO we're casting here. Even though it's on the screen of the scoreboard at the top, I'm beginning to panic that people haven't been to the eye doctor recently. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm such a jerk. It's right there, guys. It's right there. I know you probably just came in. You're focused on the game. You're <laughs> But if I could zoom in on it, if this was Eli, I would make it bigger. No, it's all good. It's all good. Um, but seriously, you know, go see the eye doctor. Because I did. I saw the eye doctor for the first time in four years uh, this year and realized that my contact prescription was heavily outdated. Uh, the T90 blind memes were were real. Um, okay, so anyways, I got sidetracked. Step lance are still running around. Looking for pickoffs. This it, like blue has the army, blue has the eco, but blue can't find the position anymore. Because usually the thought process in this map is deny the mainland and you're good. Blue's already done that. The red still seems to have a fighting chance. This castle will go down for blue. There's no doubt about it. And Cryptics remains one mistake away from losing all these Lancers to a bunch of pikemen. I would have, like, this castle is a little disappointing. I would have preferred, like, I understand the state of mind that Red is in right now. Red is in survival mode, so you don't have a lot of belief. But I would have loved to see these Lancers run through and then protect villagers building a castle here. Because really, even just like this wood is so valuable to you right now if you're Cryptics. Blues continues to lose vills to these Lancers. But is reacting. And still has the town centers and has a 20 villager lead now. Alright, so live viewers. Obviously, if you happen to know the result, like if you're one of these two players or somehow you saw it in the Discord, please don't spoil. Stating the obvious, but... Pick a winner for me here. Red or blue? Because I'm seeing red stay alive in this game, but still not have access to the mainland. Still be behind by 20 or so villagers. Now we got Halb coming in for blue. Like, I think I still have to lean towards blue. But it is possible that this would be a very frustrating death for blue if Cryptix is able to do moments like this. Like, just keep using mobility and random sides. But this is wild. It's almost like they had completely different starting scenarios now with the positions they're coming from. This is crazy. 
And Kipchaks don't have any attack upgrades. So that should be a problem. But they are still speedy, so they can get in close and get a couple kills. With Pikemen, it's one thing. But now that there's Halbout, if the Halbs connect with these Lancers, these Lancers are really going to start to disappear. But, I mean, Cryptics is such a micro-nerd, dude. Continues to just get some value. Still needs to make a big push for Eco at some in some um, some location. Oh man, Blue really struggling here. Looks away for a second. Now brings in some of these Halbs. Maybe thinks this isn't enough Halbs. Would be a sick play from Cryptics is to bring Vils, like bring all these Vils. Come with the army, you force a fight, drop a castle, then treb down everything. It's risky because you could lose the fight and lose the game, but that's kind of feels like what's what he needs. More villagers going to stone. We do have more kip checks being added out of both castles and being brought over here. I like that. I, kip check is really good if your opponent has helps. I like that a lot. It feels like 10 to 15 kip checks with at least Bodkin. And then maybe you can take some better fights. Still can take pretty decent engagements, these these step lancers, just because of that extra range they have. The blue's got so much eco, is adding more army, adding so many military buildings. Still knows that red is not here. Feels like again, this this has to come down to a forward castle with the fight. That could do as well though. That gives you wood, that gives you gold. Hmm. Step Lancers trying to use that extra range. Here come the Vils. Zero on gold for Cryptics, who's taken all the gold off the starting island now. There's none left. <laughs> His micro is really good. Continues to just getting close. Micro back away. Yo, Cryptics. You've learned from the do not trickle treb screams, haven't you? Maybe even a position to go for the more forward castle here. Would definitely prefer that the castle be next to the fight. But that might feel too risky. Blue probably can't believe what's happening right now. Castle's gonna go up. TC gets trebbed down. 34 Lancers for Cryptics, who is going to reclaim some gold. Blue seems terrified. Blue is a big army. Is it good enough to stop this composition here? And just the amazing unit control from Cryptics with the Lancers. There are pros who don't control Lancers this good. Yeah, he's really just backing away at the right times. More Kip checks on the way. Good unit control. And Kip checks uh, doing so little damage in general because they don't even have... Um, fletching at this point. And Blue's falling apart. I think at a certain point, you just have to let the Halbs fight. Like, if you have the eco, you just gotta let the Halbs engage. Maybe Blue hasn't seen a fight that looks good enough yet. Because Red's micro is really um, over, like overwhelming, I believe. But yeah, the Halbs just not engaging. And just falling back is giving Cryptic some momentum. Fletching now is on the way. Cryptics has the gold. It's, this is a lot of blues eco. A lot of villagers are exposed here. A lot of farming eco is exposed. It begins to shift back to the direction that Red wanted to start with for with the TC. And the Lancers and the Kipchaks are going to find these villagers. And what is this? What is happening? This is crazy. More upgrades from blue. Blue is not dead. The population's dead even now. No, it looks bad for Blue. The score looks awful for Blue as well, which which would probably make him feel like he wants to resign after this. Guys, Blue lost most of his houses here. He's now lost his TC and most of his houses here after Red lost his villagers and all of his TC here. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is complete chaos. And Blue is super housed now because... At a moment where he has to make more military. 
I think something that didn't help with that attack was that a lot of his production buildings were on the other side. But, like, his skirms are fully upgraded Dravidian skirms, and he's got Halb. This should be a better fight for blue every time. The cryptics keeps being a nerd. It's actually annoying me just watching it. My feeling is blue is, like, giving... He doesn't realize how good the fights would be for him with his Halbs if he actually just engaged. I think that there's been a, a bit of fear because of how some of the fights with the pikemen went. You just mop up the step lances if the halves actually get a hit. And Blue's not dead. And Blue's got a big army. The fight's gonna, gonna happen here. You see the skirms behind, taking out the Kipchaks. Cryptics has fallen down to 100 pop. He does have the castle here, but Cryptics... You know, he finally found out how good this trash army can be. But he's not dead yet because he has the castle and his opponent can't push him. This is crazy. But his opponent doesn't have a castle! And now Blue's like really hoping to save up for Trebs. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what you do if you're in Red's position, okay? When you have the defensive castle set up and your opponent can't really push you, you start to raid the other areas. That's, that's kind of the goal. And then you wait. Like, if he brings his own Trebs, then you use your Trebs in defense. You're obviously checking for Kip check upgrades, yada, 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 but... <laughs> it's crazy to me how much eco he has built up on the, uh, the starting area. And these moments, you can think a little bit more about upgrades. I mean, the 24 on food for Cryptics is still really nice, too. Should allow him to, to consider some... Some more upgrades. No horse collar for either really hurts in these games. Elite step lancer. I mean, why not? When the lancers have done so much for you, why not? Oh man, villagers are going to be found here, and castle could be even be denied. Lancers finding more kills. Blue has to react to this for now. Nice reaction though. Castle's a bit of a weird one, but I understand it because it's far enough away from the enemy trebs. Protects the gold, protects the wood. You can tell Cryptics just did an upgrade check. He's like, what upgrades can I do? Getting the stone mining, getting the gold mining. Here the Kip checks, finding some nice value. Here the Lancer's finding nice value. Yeah, Cryptics just seems... His mobility seems to be a factor that he's utilizing very well in these games. Very well here with the humans. And now actually has the villager lead. Somehow. Guys, pause, okay? I know most of you guys have watched this from the beginning, but for the random guy named Jeff who skipped ahead and missed all the good stuff on YouTube, let me just re rewind you on how this usually works, okay? Red started here. Red tried to go here, lost everything, lost his TC, okay? Blue started here, ended up here. Red lost this, went here. Then blue lost all of this, but then blue had here and here. But now blue has lost this and is taken here. This is crazy. This is crazy. Like, this is... Jeff really missed out because this is just not a normal game. Blue still got a massive freaking army, man. Like, blue's army will kill red's army every time if red in actually engages against the army. And now blue's going to mix in bombard cannons to try and push this castle. I really think Kipchak, Lancer, eventually just becomes so much weaker than what Blue has. Just because Halb is so strong anytime it gets a, a hit. And the Dravidian Skirms fire faster. The Arbalest are still a really solid addition with a lot of damage output. And one Bombard Cannon's out. There's not much more from Blue. Is Blue going to run out of... No, Blue's still got plenty of gold back here. Blue just needs to find it. Ballistics coming in for Cryptics. He didn't have that one before. Uh, maybe he could get Chemistry in there too. He's going to really feel forced to address this. Rip to that cow. But he's going to feel forced to address this because of the Bombard Cannon being here. We'll see. No stone right now for Cryptics. Most of the stone that he took 
was here. Um, there's actually... Yeah, there is a stone pile available there. If Blue looks away for too long, he's going to have Lancers up in his business. He needs to be very protective of this Bombard Cannon. I actually... I get why you want to make Bombard Cannons. But I actually wouldn't mind Trebs just because it's easier to protect them because they could sit further back. Right now, Cryptic's using his Trebs as part of the fight. What a grind, people! What a grind! This is crazy! And it's it's a rare one, too, for viewers, because I guarantee that 99.9% .9 of people watching have never played this map. Uh, again, I did dozens of test games on it. I can explain. I mean, I just... You, you don't know how hectic this map can be until you play it. And uh, honestly, this is an example of, of craziness I've never seen in any of my practice games or any of the games I watched. The Lancers try and loop around for the Bombard Cannons. The Trebs are going here for the castle. Blue's now going to try and use these Bombard Cannons for the Trebs while also defending from the Lancers. And the Kiptex run in for those Bombard Cannons. And they're going to die. The castle also goes down, though. Uh, the Trebs will also go down. The Cryptic's lost all of his army for this, though. He lost all of his army. He's going to lose his Trebs, too. And Blue still has more units being produced. Very expensive loss. Trebs! Boom! Trebs go down! Now this castle can go down, and Blue can reclaim this land. In theory. But we'll see what this game holds. 60 bills versus 73. Both players still producing bills. Look at the resources collected right now. Resources collected is 50k for both. Also, idle time is uh, seen better days for blue. But I mean, what are you going to do? You can't reverse that at this point. <laughs> he settled it down. Elite Kip check from the forward castle here from Cryptics. He's thinking, what more can I do, basically? I need to make my Kip check stronger and Elite will not complete. Elite only costs wood and food. So it makes sense for him to research that, considering those are the only resources he has. And he doesn't have gold, guys. He actually does not have gold. This was the only area Cryptix was taking gold. Wild. Wild, wild stuff. And Blue... Blue doesn't mind making only food and wood units because having access to the Dravidian Skirms, the Dravidian Cow, and the Dravidian Halbs is actually more than fine against what Red is making anyways. Oh, God. Oh, God. Not the cannons. Oh, Jean Bureau. Oh, no! No! <laughs> That's so important. Okay, well, I mean, there's just... There's still one cannon remaining. I thought Blue had lost... Like, first I thought Red lost this game straight up. Then I thought Blue was maybe throwing a little bit. I, I still thought he had the chance. Then I looked at Cryptix's position when he started to tread push here, thinking Blue couldn't stabilize his mind. He couldn't slow things down. We've all been there, right? Type of one in chat if you know what that means. Where it's like... If you could settle and breathe and think for a second, sure, you could maybe figure out what to do. But sometimes games just unravel on you so quickly and you can't keep your mind right. He still has the cow grouped into his army, by the way. And yeah, Blue... I think what simplified it for Blue is having less of a base to worry about, honestly. Remember I said that when he spread his TCs out. I think you having everything in one spot really helps you. <laughs> this freaking cow, dude. <laughs> is there a is there a power up, guys? Or a <clears throat> a cower up? <laughs> Sorry, stay. Please don't dislike the video. Please don't unsub. <laughs> please. Please. Don't do it. No elite kip check. Um, this is something that Cryptix does not know, by the way. But he does move his kip checks into the reinforcement area. And now Blue's got to be like, Oh, are you freaking kidding me? I got to go back and chase him again? God, I would be so annoyed. Honestly, if Cryptix would have collected these three relics back when I mentioned it, he would he would have been able to afford so much more. But again, another example of something that's easy to say and difficult to do amongst everything else. 
These kip checks, they're going to run right into these skirms. There's some gaps for them to escape, but there's not going to be many kip checks remaining. And then another Bombard Cannon gets sniped by Cryptix. Cryptix just will not give it up. But he will lose all of his Lancers in the process. And the cow's still there too. So that's how you know Blue's in a great spot. 85 vils for Cryptix. Hmm. Man, that's wild. He does have stone. But how is he supposed to kill this army? It's going to be a really tricky army to kill. I have been annoyed for Blue many times. Because Cryptix just finds these ways... To distract him enough. <laughs> the cow. Uh, and snipe a cannon. Like, there's been how ha Pike, Skirm, all these counter units out this whole time. And it always feels like Cryptix is finding damage. Still, it feels like the Kipchex will eventually go down. And the Bombard Cannon Mass is back. I think it's now or never here for Cryptix. He needs something more. And that something more is going to be a YOLO castle near that gold. Here is Kiptex are dying. Bombard cannon. Oh god. Into the freaking castle. The cow and the cannon stand together. He is attacking with the cow. The cow is attacking. I'm not kidding. He had it in the same control group. Oh no. Oh god. The cow has gone down. There's a reason we talk about these things. And with the cow goes his cannons and that's just how these things go the cow is important <laughs> what in the world is this game will this castle go up dude oh man he built it in a spot where he can't actually fully surround the castle if he could have built this castle here and gotten gold even for a limited period of time it could have been so good lancer's going in again for a cannon Blue's used to it at this point. Saves the cannon. Villagers have repositioned now. House wall. Well, I mean, they're actually building it now. This is... Uh, not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. That castle is going to be denied. More Lancers come in to snipe a cannon. You got to be kidding me. Okay. Repairs it. Beautiful. Sick. We know he's coming again, but with what golds? Red does not really have the golds, and that has been the big issue. This castle is a doubt castle. So another doubt sighting on a hidden cup map. Onager's on the way from this siege workshop. Maybe one or two onager shots, and you can clear out the arbs, and then you could be okay. Maybe. Really feels like red needs light cav, though. You need a unit that's good against skirms that doesn't cost gold. All the units that red's been making cost golds. And this is a player who hasn't been able to mine gold for a long time. And blue just keeps coming. And blue still has gold. Like, blue could still go over here and take this gold. That's fine. Kip checks. Going to be sniped anytime they get in close. Love how blue brought the villager forward to repair as well. All right, blue. How's your micro? 12 hours of idle time from Blue, but Blue just kept going, man. His opponent has made this so messy. So many villagers sitting around. So much craziness. But if you look at your economy, you don't look at the cannons. And that's what Cryptix has done a good job of forcing. He's probably looking at his economy right now. Villager goes down. Oh, 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 oh. Onager. Boom. Get sniped. There is one more on the way, but that could be it here for Red. And the castle's gonna fall. Castle down. Blue holds on. Hour and 22 minutes slog this game. And pretty soon, Blue is going to reclaim all this land. Uh, the Arbalest are dancing here. And they can take care of the Onager themselves. There you go. Cannons still taking out buildings. Cryptix, you can't, ev you can't re evacuate. You can't evacuate part two here because you will be evacuating to an area with less resources than where you're at currently <laughs> to devacuate -de re-evacuate devacuate -de unvacuate i don't know what word i should be going for here 
It's been an amazing game. It's a best of three here. This is the final game. It's been the best one out of all of them, and now he is a cow. I'm going to have a cow if he wins this game. Okay, selling resources to get some gold. Just click the Hussar upgrade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's really good. Yeah, and now you can make... Now your stables can make Hussars, and you can at least try and raid. And, like, with how stubborn Cryptics has been, I'm not ready just yet to call it quits on him. But Blue is already pushing to go in towards this cow. <gasps> oh, 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 he doesn't know it's there! He hasn't been here before! He doesn't know the castle's there! Disaster! Ah! Disaster! That's expensive. Okay. This is all before Hussars show up, too. Again, that is on cracked terrain, so even though the fact it's on top of the hill, it will still go down so much faster. Oh, <laughs> this freaking guy. <laughs> Gryptix is going to try to come back to the area that he started in. It'd be very fitting if he built a TC. But Blue sees this. Blue's got vision on it. And Blue will continue to push through. And Red is going to try and build a TC. That TC will not go up. Well, I mean, if Hussar support comes in, it might, actually. If only the Hussars were here immediately. I mean, Blue should just, I guess, continue to push this way. I'm not really sure what to suggest. Yeah, because all your new army should go here. There's no sense in sending your army back. TC is still being built here. And the Hussars have decent upgrades. Red should continue to fight, though, so the TC completes. Maybe didn't want to because of the halbs in there, and now the TC will not complete. Going for raids. Okay. Could be some pretty epic raids there. Um, It's now Cryptix's turn to lose all of his buildings. Big raids coming in. Here come more villagers. They're going to go batter down that tower. <laughs> Cryptix is continually stubborn here and finding villager kills. Listen, if Blue separates his Bombard Cannons from his Arbs at one point, he could the whole push stalls. So you have to hope that this distraction does that for you. Alright, he's got wood. Here comes the, the unit slowly crawling forward from Blue. I think Blue has learned patience in this game because of Cryptics. Blue is 120 army now. Yeah, at a certain point, like you can raid all you want. At a certain point, though, you do have to face the music. Or you do have to face their army. And that is not something that Cryptix is able to do now. And he's going to lose his only TC in a moment, which is actually his starting TC, which is almost fitting for this game. Still found great raids here. Like, killed 120-some villagers. Just hasn't been able to take resources, you know? Somehow collected more than his opponent, but feels like his opponent has has had more consistent control. And yeah, now now you have to address this. The Hussars are coming home to do this. TC will be down though. Repair away, but that TC will disappear. And now no TCs for Cryptics. These Hussars may be able to clear this. Um, that's quite a few Hussars. There's still a few more in the queue. But then Blue should be able to use the rest of his army to stop you elsewhere. And Blue loses the cannons. I'm going to go to the military map. Look at the, mi the mini map. It shows Blue's army. So it's in like so many different areas. <laughs> because of like the random things that have happened in this game. <laughs> He's just got military everywhere. And Red just has this one little area. The fact that Cryptix just had to delete his own houses is pretty expensive, though, honestly. He does have this wood here. I guess Blue can't see that now. Yeah, Blue could barely see it, so... Whew, what a game! What a game! Has to be game over, right? I think we've we finally reached the point where it is actually over. There's 50 halbs on the field. There's 20 arbs. There's skirms there, too. These, like, there, there's going to be nothing available for Cryptics to take here anymore, pretty much.
And these villagers have been spotted, so... No, he tries to just take these trees and wait for his hussars to come in to clear some of this. But the halbs need to be found. I don't know where they are. They're over here chilling out. The pacifist halbs don't want to help, but... Horse collar! <laughs> Imagine all the wood you would have saved with horse collar. That's kind of funny. Uh, but I mean, you know, blue doesn't have it. So same deal for blue, but blue obviously hasn't had a wood shortage problem, so... Red will know that he killed a lot of villagers with the last raid. And it is also, and I know they're not pros, but we say this all the time. This is the last series, uh, last game in the series, and it's been a banger of a game. So, from what I can see, doesn't really have any advantages to fight with, but is just thinking, trying to embrace his inner Gajamata, and Gajamata was able to make it happen. When it felt like, you know, the Goths would steamroll and win. So maybe he thinks he could do it. Are you freaking kidding me, dude? Are you... You little rat! How are you finding your way through? He's actually going to make his way through. And he's going to chop trees now. I mean, Blue just forgot he is 50... Like, a fourth of his population over here. It's the problem. Don't tell me Blue's going to miss out on this. Okay, blue at a random halb here, which, which actually spots it. I mean, that's huge. A blue wants to push the main eco again. Oh my god. Let me guess. He's going to lose his cannons because he's distracted? <laughs> hmm. I wonder how this is going to go. He's going to be distracted by something, and then Cryptix is going to swoop in and kill his can. Oh! I'm just shocked, guys. Wow. This is... I've never seen this before. <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, if Blue didn't notice this, a couple things could happen. If Blue didn't notice this, those vills chop wood, which means that cryptics can make more farms, okay? The next thing is, if half of these villagers sneak down and finish this castle, suddenly cryptics also has access to gold. And if he has access to gold, then he's able to make, and, and a castle, you know, a lot of different things can happen. But it does get spotted. And I know it's cryptics we're talking about. But I think that he is going to have to call it here soon. Because if you don't have wood, your farms will not recede. And that's the problem. That's a problem. Doesn't matter how many villagers you're killing. Eventually, you just straight up run out of resources. Uh, some of these farms recently receded. But some of them I'm clicking are below 100 food. So that farm count that he has is going to go way down. And now his bills are right. <laughs> Man. It's like someone put a gun to Cryptix, Cryptix's head and said, Hey, you win this game or else, buddy. <laughs> He's He is a fighter, dude. And I mean, he, he should have never won this game. He should have never had a chance to win this game. Right? This was so over. And he somehow brought it to this point. So the fight definitely has worked out. Is it going to lead to him winning? I don't think so, but he, this is the first time he's had a TC here for a while. So, here we go. Ah! <laughs> Guys, sometimes you have to click the hotkeys at the bottom right, <laughs> and you have to... Put it on military mode so you can see on your mini-map <laughs> where your army is. <laughs> this is 50 pop. Just chilling there. <laughs> oh my god. And now freaking cryptics is just gonna run around and snipe cannons. Oh god. Oh no, not the <laughs> not the cannons. Oh, not again. Oh. <laughs> oh, jeez. Guys, blue isn't on gold. Just FYI. Like, blue isn't taking gold. As halbs are not allowing it for whatever reason. So, I'm just saying. Like, if blue's at 130 more pop, is that enough? <laughs> is that enough? Look at these raids. 
150 villager kills by cryptics. Jeez, I told I was told this series was good. I didn't know this was gonna be Gajamata against Gregory the Seventh all over again. He found him! He found him! Woo! Finally! And he's gonna send him right back over there because that's where the hustlers are going. Did he snipe another dude? He found another opportunity and sniped another freaking cannon. Oh my god. Alright, can someone do the math for me? And please tell me um, how much gold three relics in one hour and 20 minutes of an Age of Empires 2 game would bring you? Three relics, one hour and 20 minutes. Just saying, because like, I'm staring at these relics continuously. I'm looking at the fight from Cryptics, and I'm thinking, if he had gold, what could he be doing with that gold? A couple more onagers here or there. A couple more blacksmith upgrades. It really could pay off. Honestly, with this many halves, do you even need Siege? I think you can just ting-ting down the TC. And the castle, for that matter. Huh. My goodness. Well, more hustlers finding their way in. Wow, this is crazy. This is just crazy. Such a fight right here from Cryptics. We've seen 250 villagers die. What a game. What a crazy, crazy game. Thank you, everyone, for watching this live and video form, and I hope you've enjoyed. This is... the definition of how to rat it out. He's adding fishing ships! He's adding fishing ships! <laughs> oh, man, that's so funny. He's, he's like, I've got to take the shore fish. We must win this game. I mean... Adding fishing ships isn't bad, even at this stage. It's really not. I know he's still having some wood problems, but they, there's a lot of food out there. He's repairing his TC now. Probably feels like he has to YOLO in for that cannon. And Blue's just not having it. He's like, nope, I'm going to block it off. I will not allow this. My pointy boys are here, and they protect it. There's no wood to repair. Will Cryptics finally call this? Cryptics is at 67 pop. His opponent has 142 army. Because he doesn't have... He is all this army in queue and he continues to lose vills to the raids. TC's gonna go down. The halbs are gonna chase the villagers. Surely this is it. Blue is getting upgrades he hasn't had in a while. Squires is certainly gonna help. Squires would have been really helpful chasing certain things down this game. And, um, well, <clears throat> if this was scripted, this would be the point where Cryptics finally calls it. And then I could naturally thank everyone on YouTube for watching and say how much of a blessing this game was. But Cryptic says, nah, we're fishing, bro. We're fishing. You know what I wasn't doing before? Fishing, T90. So if I'm still alive, nah. Oh, okay, he calls the GG anyways. Gives the GG well played. And uh, what a series and what a game it was. From both of these two. What a crazy game. And, you know, like I said, like, Evacuation obviously produced some really good games in Hidden Cup. Um, but listen, I feel as though this map is incredibly difficult to play. And this was a clash of, like, two really fun potential strategies. Um, the second TC from the Cumans was countered. But then Cryptics kept fighting. And the positions these guys were able to gain on the map, like this, when, when this hits YouTube later, we're going to time-lapse this entire mini-map for how this game played out. It was just absolutely unbelievable. A uh, viewer here said, man, I'm exhausted. I can't imagine how the players felt. Yeah, I agree. It was an amazing grind of a game. Obviously, these players aren't perfect, right? These guys are far from perfect. But 1,300 ELO... I mean, really know how to grind. They know a lot about the game. They fought hard. And that's kind of the whole point of this Hidden Community Cup. We've got 200 people at a variety of different ELOs playing different ELO sections. And again, I can't promise to cast everything, but I will hopefully be able to cash some, uh, occasionally cast some games, um, especially if they're as special as this one. So, um, yeah, let's, let's look through some of the stats. Wow, they have the same average APM as me? Huh? 
Do they really? No, okay, it's, 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 uh, uh, okay, it, it, never mind. Um, <clears throat> KD, very close the whole way through. I think the Eco KD was actually a, um, Eco KD is the wild one. So total Eco throughout the entire game for blue, 215. If blue didn't continue to produce villagers after those raids, blue would have died. Blue knew, despite all the TCs and castles, despite all the people who in my chat who are like, man, I'm a thousand ELO and I feel like I would destroy these guys, despite them never playing the map before, despite all the things happening, right? Um, Blue just said, it doesn't matter how crazy and messy it gets. It doesn't matter that I had shoulder surgery three or four weeks ago or whatever he apparently said. I have to continue to produce more vills. And if I don't have those vills, I'm going to lose the game. And he just kept going actually want to see this is maybe one of these games we do this i want to look at villager count okay so that's total pop um look at the look at the little dips like red it's pretty consistent and then it has the occasional dips for blue it's like up down up down up down up down with economy just because of how many raids were coming in all the time just crazy stuff and obviously, like, military population, it hit a point where Red just wasn't able to take engagements against the military. This was around the fact that Red started to lose his castles. Really tough matchup for the, um, <clears throat> for the humans, I think. Like, humans need to use their raiding, which they did. And um, I think Hussar needed to come in earlier. I think a lot of gold was spent by Cryptics there with the Kipchaks and the Lancers. And both of them probably could have done with getting a few relics, so... But a good game. Uh, I hope people on YouTube enjoyed this one. Uh, obviously, let me know if you're interested in seeing more games from the mid to low ranks on some of the Hidden Cup maps, as they certainly produce some different styles of games. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for watching and all the support you brought me and uh, will hopefully continue to bring as I work hard to bring more content all the time.